Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is considered one of the greatest composers of all time. During his lifetime, Mozart composed over 600 pieces of music ranging from symphonies and concertos to operas and sonatas. His most famous works include Don Giovanni, The Marriage of Figaro, and The Magic Flute. Mozart's style of music would go on to influence many composers to come, including Beethoven and Chopin. Despite his popularity and talent, Mozart died mysteriously and practically penniless, but his spirit will forever live on through his music. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born in Salzburg, Austria on January 27, 1756. He was the only surviving son born to Leopold and Anna Maria. Leopold, a very successful composer and violinist, started his daughter Maria Anna, nicknamed Nanerl, on the keyboard when she was seven years of age. At the age of only three, Wolfgang watched as his father Leopold tutored his older sister Nanerl on the piano. He would often mimic his sister as she practiced. Soon after, Wolfgang began to demonstrate an understanding of the chords and tempo. Leopold recognized his son's talent and immediately had his son learning to play the keyboard as well. Both of Leopold's children excelled in music and Leopold wanted to capitalize on their talents. So he decided to devote the majority of his time to their education in music. Wolfgang soon started to excel beyond his father's teachings when he produced a musical composition at the age of only five. Wolfgang had also demonstrated an affinity for the piano, organ, and violin. In 1762, Leopold decided to take his two children, Wolfgang, now six, and Nanerl, age 11, to the Bavarian court in Munich to begin the first of what would become several tours of Europe. Leopold presented his children as musical prodigies at the courts in Paris, London, and Zurich, just to name a few. Young Wolfgang was introduced to many accomplished musicians. One of these musicians of particular importance was Johann Christian Bach. It would turn out that Bach would have strong influence on Mozart's music. Nannerl's music career was now over since she was approaching the age of marriage, and as was the custom at the time, it was no longer appropriate for her to perform in public. In December 1769, Mozart, now age 13, and his father left Salzburg and traveled to Italy. The two-year trip was much longer than any trip the young Mozart had ever encountered. Leopold wanted to showcase his son's talents to as many audiences as possible. One of those talents just happened to be an outstanding memory for music. Wolfgang had been attending a performance of Gregorio Allegri's Miserere. When the performance was over, the young Mozart was able to write out the entire score from just memory, only needing to correct a few minor errors. It was during this trip that Mozart wrote a new opera, Mithridate Re de Ponto, for the court of Milan. The young Mozart performed constantly. When he wasn't performing, he was writing compositions of music. Wolfgang was now becoming an awkward teenager and was described to have immature tendencies that include crying often 
and making fart jokes, which could be understandable since he missed out on much of his childhood. In 1773, Mozart and his father returned from their final trip to Italy. At this time, Mozart was offered a position as assistant concertmaster in Salzburg. While in this position, Mozart had the opportunity to work with different genres of music. In 1777, Mozart, now 21 years of age, completed the composition of the Piano Concerto No. 9 in E-flat major. However, Mozart was becoming bored with his position, so in August of that year, joined by his mother, Mozart traveled to the cities of Paris, Munich, and Mannheim. He was presented with several promising positions, all of them falling through at the last minute. Wolfgang had run out of money and in turn had to pawn many valuable personal items in order to pay for his expenses. On July 3rd, 1778, after falling ill, Mozart's mother passed away. Wolfgang was terrified to tell his father the news of his mother's passing. In fact, Leopold ended up blaming his son for making his mother travel and stay in poor conditions. Wolfgang returned to Salzburg soon after her death. While back in Salzburg, Mozart took a position working for the Prince Archbishop Colorado as concertmaster. Mozart composed many more pieces of music for the church. The young Mozart was offended by the reception he received from Colorado and felt like he was being treated like a servant. After several arguments and then a physical removal from the Archbishop's presence, Mozart left Salzburg and traveled to Vienna where he decided to work as a freelance composer. While in Vienna, Mozart stayed with friends at the home of Fridolin Weber. Mozart worked as a music tutor and concert performer. In late 1781, Mozart wrote to his father asking for his father's blessing in order to marry Weber's daughter, Constanza. The answer that Leopold gave to Wolfgang is unclear because the response he wrote was rumored to have been destroyed by Constanza. However, in later correspondence, it was indicated that Leopold was not happy with the union. His father's approval didn't matter to Mozart, for he was in love. On August 4, 1782, the couple finally married. Constanza and Wolfgang would go on to have six children, only two of those children would survive infancy, Carl Thomas and Franz Xavier. Around the mid-1780s, Wolfgang and Constanze Mozart's extravagant lifestyle was becoming a serious problem. Mozart was popular and successful, but despite his success as a pianist and composer, Mozart was falling into serious financial difficulties. You see, Mozart associated mostly with the aristocratic Europeans and in felt he should live like one. Mozart's general demeanor of silliness and the fact that he was from Austria made him less than desirable to the paying aristocracy. The court's musical preferences gravitated toward Italian composers, like that of Antonio Salieri, a professional rival of Mozart's. So when things got really tough for the Mozarts, Wolfgang would sell his wife's jewelry and silver to keep them afloat. By the middle of 1788, Mozart income had dwindled. As a way of reducing his cost of living, he moved his family from the city of Vienna to a suburb of Alsagrund. His new home provided more space for his family, but did little to reduce his cost of living. During this time, Mozart wrote his last three symphonies. He traveled long distances in the hopes of reviving his success, but his efforts were wasted. From 1788 to 1789, Mozart fell into a deep depression and began to experience bouts of hysteria and then manic creativity. The deterioration of Mozart's mental and physical health was now really taking its toll. 
It has even been suggested that Mozart may have suffered from bipolar disorder. Then one day, an unknown messenger arrived at Mozart's door requesting a composition, a requiem, a death song, for a person who did not wish to be identified. The commission payment was so good that Mozart did not question the messenger further and took on the job. As Mozart worked on the requiem, he developed a sore throat. As the time passed, he grew weaker and weaker, and he began to feel as though he might have been writing the composition for himself. On the day that Mozart's skin erupted in a red rash, he exclaimed, I am being poisoned to death. The doctors that came to see Mozart diagnosed him with miliary fever, which really didn't explain anything. Despite their best efforts to treat the famous composer with leeches and unhealthy concoctions for his skin, Mozart's condition continued to worsen. His joints were sore, his fingers were swollen, and he was constantly vomiting. Despite how ill he was, Mozart continued to hum and tap out the tune for the requiem he was commissioned to write. It has been recounted that on the day that Mozart said, I can taste death in my mouth, a priest was summoned, but the priest, unhappy with Mozart's work in the church, would never come. Finally, a doctor was summoned, but knowing Mozart's fate, the doctor did not want to be held responsible for failing to save one of the greatest composers of all time. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart died on December 5th, 1791. He was only 35 years old. The true cause of Mozart's death remains a mystery due to the lack of an autopsy report. Officially, records list the cause of death as miliary fever. Mozart's body was buried in a cloth sack in an unmarked common grave, for only aristocrats and royalty were allowed to have coffins and headstones. Mozart never did get to finish the Requiem, just as he didn't get to finish his life. In recent years, doctors have re-examined what happened to Mozart. One of the most plausible theories believed to have killed him was a streptococcal infection that spread from his throat to his blood and eventually his kidneys. An early rumor reported by a newspaper addressing the cause of Mozart's death was that he had been poisoned by his rival Antonio Salieri. However, this was never proven to be true, as the signs of illness Mozart displayed did not indicate poisoning. So, what do you think happened to Mozart? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so that you never miss a new video. And I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.